generally maintained some stable maturity as some of these uh, terrible statements are made. But we expect them as leaders of this nation to understand that the security of this nation is not about any particular government. It's not partisan. And I think no matter which party you belong, no matter the political opinion you hold, or what your opinion is about those who are in government now, you must separate us from the future, the progress, the security of this nation. And so we still call on them, former people that have looted this nation uh, at very critical level at the state and other levels, we expect these leaders to show responsibility, to show sensitivity, to show patriotism. You never see any other nation whose armed forces are deployed uh, to secure the nation being attacked by politicians. It's not done. Go to the U.S. or go to other countries, you never hear this. I think it all has to do with our own level of patriotism and commitment to the nation. We think we can just say anything. But once you have become a leader, there are things you should not say because you know they have weight and they can cause problems. And I think that I call on all our leaders to show responsibility at this critical time in the history of our country. Do you think that this fight against terrorism by uh, the government and security agencies is overwhelming? Is what? Do you think it's overwhelming? I wouldn't say it's overwhelming because if you look at what the armed forces have done, have done in, the, in the last uh, one and a half years, you will see that uh, generally their strategy of containing this attack and localizing it uh, have generally succeeded. And the armed forces have also made tremendous progress in busting attacks, in preventing attacks, if not because of the operations of the armed forces in the Northeast and some parts of the Northwest. Uh, what we would have seen in this country would have been far more widespread. But if you look at the situation generally, the armed forces, the security forces have done a great job and they're doing a great job. They have largely contained the group and uh, they, have, they have also bust attacks. Uh, they have also worked on their lines of supplies. And I think that they are doing a great job. What we require, I think, is greater participation by the citizenry. Uh, because it is not the kind of thing that the armed forces alone uh, can fish out those living among us. And that is why we continue to call on community leaders. Because, you see, when we dealt with the situation in the Niger Delta, it was because some of the leaders in the Niger Delta came out. They, they knew that the Niger Delta was becoming a ball fire and that development of the region would completely be crippled. And so they stepped out and took responsibility and discussed with the militants and included, including governors uh, and other people who are leaders in the region. So I think what we require, particularly in the northern part of the country, is greater involvement. I know our leaders have been doing a great... I've just started the Sultan of Sokoto, holding meetings all the time, talking and making appeals. But I expect greater uh, commitment uh, by all our leaders and all professionals and all people in the north uh, to reach out to people, to speak with our communities. Uh, and we must cooperate with security forces. There is no solution to it. If we don't cooperate with security forces, then the, 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 the violence will fester. And like I said, we are not ruling that we have already offered negotiation on the table. The security forces must continue to prevent attack to save lives. This is what they are doing. This does not rule out any other option. But I think we need greater leadership unity behind the federal effort to deal with this matter. Let me take you to uh, the 27th of March 2012, part of the reason why that question arise, uh, arises. Because uh, on that day, the president was in South Korea, uh, Seoul. He was speaking with Yonhap News Agency while he was attending this two-day summit on peaceful use of nuclear energy. He had about 51 world leaders present at the time. And he said, and I quote, In terms of security challenges, we have some parts of the country where we have terrorist attacks, but it does not affect the whole country. We are in reasonable control. We have the belief that in the middle of this year, in terms of security of individuals, we will have full control. This was, uh, it was supposed to be middle of 2012. And so reports eventually did say, well, this they interpreted as him saying, by the middle of that year, this challenge will be over. But now, we're still grappling with this. So, that's why we ask, isn't this overwhelming? Not really. You know, let me, let me tell you, um, 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 you know, leaders speak based on, on their own assessment and based on security reports. Let me say that a lot much more progress has been made in containing terror in the north than the situation was. Uh, if you look at the times of, in terms of arrest, in terms of busting attacks, 
uh, in terms of the real operations that are going on, the security forces have scored significant successes. Uh, but because of the nature of the, the attacks, you see, when, when what has happened uh, is that as we contain them uh, in the critical areas, um, there are elements that move out to purely uh, sometimes uh, unsuspecting areas uh, to launch attacks. So, yes, if the president said that, he said that because uh, he, he, he must have had before him significant information about the record of successes uh, being made by the security forces. If there are setbacks, yes, in every situation, <laughs> you can have a target and you have a setback. But the truth is that there's been a lot of effort and the president was speaking based on authority. And unfortunately, we haven't quite reached that point. In every world, you have that kind of situation. Uh, in, 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 in several respects, in every of the movement, we have had sometimes uh, in Afghanistan, Americans setting targets. Sometimes those targets are met. Sometimes they are not met. So the truth is the fact that if they are not met, it means that the operation is continuing and we are learning from why it hasn't been so. That doesn't mean that it's over overwhelming or government has lost control. No. What it therefore seeks is greater partnership by the people of Nigeria, by the leaders of Nigeria and our communities to contain the group. We'll say, uh, just yesterday we were speaking with uh, Tunde Bakari, former vice presidential candidate to the CPC, and he was saying that he believes that Boko Haram is heightened or the problem of Boko Haram is heightened because of corruption. Do you agree with him? Maybe. Uh, we, cannot rule out, we cannot rule out issues of governance in the various states where Boko Haram has become a major issue. We can't rule them out. There may be some serious uh, lapses of leadership in the various areas where this group has emerged. But if it is corruption, I'm not sure that corruption can be only in the northern part of the country. <laughs> if Boko Haram can be blown purely on corruption, then uh, uh, unless we're saying that it's only people in the north that are corrupt and people in the south are not corrupt, therefore there is no Boko Haram operations in the south. So when we make this, you know, you say Tunde Bakare is a former presidential candidate of a party. So... Uh, we, cannot, we cannot rule out the fact that there are issues of governance, issues of failures of leadership at the local level, at the community level, you know, maybe uh, associated with this. And I believe that the challenge uh, is for uh, greater service delivery at different levels of government. But we cannot just blame attacks of terrorism on corruption. I don't know whether it is corruption in the U.S. that led to 9-11. I don't know whether it is corruption in Afghanistan, in Yemen, in Algeria in the Maghreb, in Yemen, that is causing terrorism. So I think that uh, there are issues, ideological issues involved, there are sectarian issues involved, and I don't think that it would be right for anybody to just sit down because you are, you are looking forward for the next election, maybe as another vice presidential candidate, uh, to just make Atlantic statement. We cannot blame everything in the country on corruption. There are issues even related to values, for example, that have crashed, not just a matter of corruption, there are some values that have crashed in several of our communities. So let us not just look at it, every problem in this nation as corruption. I think terrorism is a global phenomenon, and uh, it is not just about corruption. Corruption may have something to do with it in terms of service delivery, in terms of leadership responsibility at the various levels where these groups are operating. And we are working hard to see that those issues are addressed. But I am not sure that you can just stand up and say terrorism is because of corruption. Okay, I think you just uh, touched on two very key uh, points there, service delivery and leadership responsibility. Perhaps uh, bring us up to, uh, also to speed on what you found out uh, during your last tour. You went around the country, isn't it? And uh, there were loads and loads of criticisms that followed that particular tour. Why did you decide to go around Nigeria? Well, uh, let me say this. Um, we, we, we decided to have a good governance tour. You remember... Uh, last, last year in May, we had a ministerial platform where all ministers came out to state their own agenda, the prog their progress card, uh, their scorecard, and they said, this is what we want to do. We are working on these projects. We are working on these programs. And also for the past three years, the Federal Executive Council has issued that a lot of contracts and jobs across the country, power sector, aviation, uh, road sector, railways, uh, and so on. And I made it clear during the ministerial platform that in addition to just speaking to you and issuing press statements, we will lack stakeholders in the society, civil society, media, uh, to move out and inspect these projects and see the progress being done 
Uh, and, and that was mainly an opportunity, really, uh, to move beyond press statements to enable